It's time for the Sephora Spring Savings event, which is literally one of the only two biggest sales that Sephora has all year long. They have one in the fall, they have one in the spring, and honestly, this is like pretty much just as big as holiday season if you are a Sephora shopper. The first tier, VIB Rouge, opens up on the 5th. You get 20% off of almost everything, like most things. I think there are a couple of brand exceptions, but for the most part, almost the entire store is on sale. And then everybody else gets access starting the 9th. If you are a VIB Sephora member, you get 15% off. If you just are signing up for Sephora for the first time right now, you still get 10% off. The entire sale goes through the 15th. I know a lot of people really plan out their carts ahead of time. What I actually do is I add items into my cart in anticipation of the sale and then as soon as the sale opens up for me I just check out right away because things tend to go out of stock really quickly because I've definitely had some times where I waited too late and things got out of stock and I was kind of sad so just as a little tip the add to cart trick is a really good one if you're trying to get exactly the items before they get out of stock and as always I will be linking all of my exact products that I'm recommending in the info box down below to make it quick and easy for you to just pop that in your cart and then wait for the sale to start. So I really hope this top recommendations list from Sephora is really helpful for you because I've tried so many products. There's just so many recommendations that I love to share. Okay, let's go ahead and just hop right in. Let's get started. The first item I wanted to recommend is probably my new favorite go-to foundation. It's from House Labs. I love this foundation. It's, I would say, a modernized foundation formula that really looks so good on the skin. In terms of coverage, I would almost say this is like medium buildable coverage. You can definitely have full coverage with this, but it doesn't feel as full coverage. I feel like if you just do like one layer, you do get quite a lot of coverage, but you just don't have to use a crazy amount. It really spreads quite well. Sometimes choosing the colors can be a little tricky. When I tried to just choose based on the description online, it was way, way, way too dark. So I actually had to go in the store and color match. The one that I came home with is 190 Light Cool. A little note about House Labs foundations. Their cool is actually warm. Their cool is yellow based and I think their warm is more like pink peach. So don't necessarily just go by the name. Definitely swatch it, try it out, do your research, or if you're close to my skin, just get this color. The next product I wanted to recommend is a concealer. Now this is one that I think a lot of people have been talking about and it's definitely my new favorite concealer. Once again, I think it's also what I would categorize as like a newer formulation. I just feel like the spreadability and dry down is much better on these modern concealers than some of the ones that we've had in the past that did have a little bit of a heavier, cakier look. I like the coverage of this. I like the smoothness. It also dries down, so I feel like it looks really nice on your skin throughout the whole day. It's not like it stays tacky all day. I know a lot of people really used to love Tarte Shape Tape, but it never quite worked for me because I really like a concealer that dries down. I like using all over my face, not exclusively under my eyes. And I could just never get Tarte Shape Tape to work for me. I don't know, let me know if you also have that experience. But maybe it's also because I like being very light-handed with my products and very like pinpoint. And I feel like this is a really good concealer for that. So the shade I've been using in this Kosas concealer is shade 02W. Blend it out, it just looks so nice. It's really such a beautiful natural finish. And yeah, I think a lot of people really love this one. My next complexion product I wanted to talk about is the, of course, the Vanessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Tint. Ever since I first tried using this, it is by far my favorite skin tint. For some reason, it just works so well with all of my combinations of makeup that I use on the regular. It doesn't have that weird experience where like it separates or has any interactions with like water-based products versus silicone-based products so your foundation gets all weird and things start to peel. It doesn't do that with this. This is like one of the very few skin tints I've found that actually play well with my other makeup. So I actually feel like this looks better as it wears throughout the day. It really just looks like your skin, but better. It's beautiful. I use the shade four and this is such a great match for my skin tone. Of course, if we're gonna talk about foundations, concealers, etc., I want to once again mention my favorite makeup brush. I'm telling you guys, you have to try this foundation brush. It's my favorite thing. I use it every single day. I actually have more than one because I can't 
can't bear to ever be parting with it. So this is the Rare Beauty Foundation Brush. The difference here has to do with a couple different things. First of all, it has like these little angles where you grip the handle. So if you want a lot of precision and you want to hold it like almost like a pencil, it's very ergonomic because it already has divots right here. It kind of like fits in your hand really, really well. You can also hold it back here to do more like a blending style, but it just feels really good in the hand. It's also beautiful, of course. The bristles themselves are very dense and it has just enough curve to give you the perfect blend. And then it's really super soft. It just does the best job of blending in my concealer, my foundation, my liquid blushes with no streaks. It just really blends everything to make my skin look Look almost like it's airbrushed. You just have to try it. Trust me on this. This is the best foundation brush. I don't think this brush is like super like viral hyped, but it should be. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> For setting powder, I once again will have to mention my Givenchy Prism Libre. I love this setting powder. It's a little bit more on the pinky side. It has four different colors. The shade name is Voile Rose. So this is kind of like a pinky tone shade. There's actually four different pinky shades. It's like pinky, peachy. You basically mix them together. I just love how finely milled this powder is, how when I put this on my face, it just erases all of the pores. They just go away. And it actually does a really, really good job setting your makeup. So as the day goes on, it's not like you have just like tons of oil and grease pop through within like an hour. I feel like it really does a good job setting everything and just perfecting everything. So I've been very pleased with my purchase. And yes, it is a little bit more on the expensive side. I always wait for these kinds of savings events to really spend on one of these products. Honestly, there's so much powder in here. It takes a long time to go through. It also has a very subtle scent, a little bit of like a pleasant, nice, light perfume scent. I've been really, really enjoying this. This is my go-to powder. I don't even grab my other ones anymore. And I've been super pleased with it. Plus the pink has a nice, very subtle brightening effect, especially on the under eyes. Moving on to some color. Let's talk about blush. Obviously everybody is going to be talking about the rare beauty blushes, but specifically I wanted to recommend this shade. This is my favorite one that I pretty much just use constantly. It's really, really good because you only need just the tiniest amount, but it just blurs out to this beautiful mauve kind of rose shade that I think is super flat. This would actually go very nicely on a wide range of skin tones. Little hesitation is if you're quite fair, if you're like very, very much lighter than me, I would instead go for Hope, which is kind of similar, but just like slightly one to two notches, not as dark as this one. But even this one, it's more like a natural mauve tone. I could just use this every day and it would just match everything all the time. It's a really great My Cheeks But Better, like matches your MLB. BB everyday kind of blush. I've always appreciated the packaging. See how it's kind of like a flat disc? It makes it super easy to open up. So if you have any like hand or joint issues, this is a really good one to try. Let's move to the eyes. This palette is from Danessa Myricks. It's the Groundworks palette. So what I really, really love and think is so innovative about this product is it's very multi-dimensional because every single shade has a pomade side and a powder side. It's an eyeshadow palette, but it's really a whole face palette. Just like you would do like a cream contour, you can literally take like that chiseled right here. This is a great contour shade. You can literally take a bigger brush, dip it into the pomade, do your contour, and it works just like a cream contour. It sets to being long wearing. And then if you want to really set that, take the powder side, go on top. I've actually tried these without any kind of primer below and the pomade side kind of acts like its own primer. So if you wanted to do a whole lid priming situation, you could always just take this lightest color, put it all over your lids and then go over top with whatever powder you want to kind of set it. You can fill in your brows, you can do your cheeks, you can use even this like orangier color. I've used that as a blush. So pretty and so neat that you can just experiment so many different ways of using this 
this all over your face. It has some warm tones, it has a couple of cool tones. So it's really a quite versatile neutral palette. Oh, of course, <laughs> the black. If you use the pomade as your eyeliner for a really smoky eyeliner and then set it with the black, I've literally had this look so good as my sole eyeliner and I didn't have crazy panda eyes and I was so shocked. It's not gonna be like the same as wearing like a gel liner. However, for like a really beautiful smoky eye, this is better than most of my typical eyeshadows that I've used, especially the combination doing the pomade and then the eyeshadow on top, you get a really nice rich black deep color. I've really had fun playing with this. So if you're bored with all of your old neutral eyeshadows and you just want to try something new, a little bit of a different method of applying makeup to your whole face, if you're a neutral girly, check this out. My next eye product I wanted to mention is actually a stick from Bobbi Brown. This bone color is kind of changing the game for me because I don't always want to use a lot of super harsh glitters and sparkles. Sometimes I want a nice matte highlight. So I love using this on my inner corners to just brighten right here, which I actually did that a little bit today. I'm not sure if you can see because again, it's not reflecting light through the camera. So it is very subtle, but you can tell in real life, my eyes look brighter. But one of my favorite ways to use this is actually as an egg yosar pencil. So if you guys don't know what an egg yosar is in Korean, uh, like culture, I guess, it's really youthful looking to have this little poof under your eyes, especially when you're smiling, it's like very cute. So what they do is they use their makeup to emphasize those little, I guess you can call them eye fat bags. It's not like dark circle bags, but like just a little, a little poof right there. So what I'll do is I'll take this pencil, I'll just kind of add it right to the middle of my eyes like that. And it's just a nice subtle way of adding a little bit of youthfulness and a little highlight to the eyes. It's just the perfect color and it lasts all day. For the brows, this has been another product that I feel like I talk about in like every single video. I love this eyebrow pencil. This is from Hourglass Cosmetics. I think one of the things I really love about this, first of all, is the shade. Soft Brunette is just such a good color for my eyebrows. It's one that's subtle enough that I don't have to be crazy exactly about it, but this is a really good lazy girl color. I don't have to push too hard. I don't have to like drag it across. And also one of my favorite things about this is the spoolie on the other side. The bristles are extra soft. This just gives a really soft smoothing effect when I blend it out and it doesn't hurt. Sometimes the other ones can be a little rough. This one's super soft. So if you're looking for a nice new, very luxurious feeling eyebrow pencil, definitely try this out. I am so in love with this formula. Moving on to the lips, I have two lip liners that I am pretty much a broken record talking about. I love these both so much. I am the queen of MLBBs. I have been loving MLBBs for like over a decade. I love my lips but better natural everyday shades and these are the two best lip liners for them. First of all, from Rare Beauty, this lip pencil in Worthy. <sighs> It's just the perfect texture. It glides on, it stays on a long time, but it's the perfect color for a pinkier neutral lip. I love this if you want a slightly pinky everyday natural look. And then if you want a slightly more brown version that is also MLBB matches, blends in with my lip, looks great every day. It is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in Everywhere, Anywhere? Anywhere Caffeine. I obsessively use both of these. In fact, if I want to look like I'm not wearing makeup but I still wanna enhance the shape of my lips, I could just wear this and nothing else. I love these so much. If you're looking for a really, really, really great hydrating lip balm. Oh my gosh, I was so impressed with this Fenty Plush Puddin. Specifically, I love the shade Kalahari Melon. <sighs> the melon scent reminds me of like Asian candy. <laughs> Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like the plum candy? It just has a certain particular fruity scent that's super nostalgic to me. It's so delicious and juicy. Plus this actual formula, this feels so lush and plush on the lips. It makes my lips feel so hydrated and the gold glitter is so pretty. It's so 
pretty. You guys that have like husbands and boyfriends that are super particular about their lip balms, the original version is also really nice and does not have any glitters in it. But for the makeup folks out there, the glitter in this, the combination of how hydrating it is, the scent, the yummy, delicious juiciness of it, Oh, it's so good. Once again, I'm gonna talk about Rare Beauty. This is the tinted lip oil in the shade Hope. I have a lot of people ask me, okay, for the tinted lip oil, what shade should I get? My general consensus for these tinted lip oils is the ones that tend to be lighter on the gloss scale don't have as strong of a tint. So if you want a stronger, long day, all lasting, long, long, long all day, long, all day lasting tint, go for a darker shade and just know that when you apply apply it, the gloss on top is gonna wear off fairly quickly. But if you want more of like an everyday shade, knowing that the tint underneath isn't necessarily going to last all day, that's kind of the compromise. So I personally liked landing somewhere in the middle. Hope is one of those shades, those in-between shades that does give you a little tint, but is still a nice natural everyday pinky color. See, I feel like the gloss itself really does kind of remind me of that like bunny tongue kind of gloss color. Such a cute pink. I love this so much. I wear it frequently, almost every day. <laughs> so if you're looking for the right shade and you have kind of a similar skin tone or coloring to me, this is a really good one to kind of start off with. But if you want a like all day lasting shade, I would just go for one of the darker colors and then just wipe off your lips right away. You got a tint. Speaking of gloss, we're gonna go back to Fenty. I'm telling you this particular shade that Fenty recently came out with, Fuchsia Flex, is going viral. Literally people are doing all different kinds of combinations. This shade, I know it looks intimidating, it looks very dark, but on the lips, this is so so gorgeous, especially if you kind of do the whole dark lip liner, kind of ombre from the edges in kind of appearance. I don't have a dark lip liner on me right now, but let me just show you the color of this actual gloss. So pretty. And the thing is this has hollow glitter inside. Did I mention that? That pinky, but just on the edges, you get like that gold olive green shift to it. So when you move, it really pops on your lips. Ooh. That's what makes this stand out so much. Super, super pretty. This one I'm gonna put on high alert for selling out. In terms of lipstick, you know, I'm not gonna pass up this opportunity to share with you my favorite lipsticks of the moment. They are from YSL. They're the Candy Glaze Lipsticks. They're basically like a really opaque lip balm. It's almost like, like a super shiny plush formula. I'm gonna use that Makeup Forever lip liner again. So my top number one MLBB shade is is definitely shade 15. It literally looks like my lip color. It's like a warm muted rose. See exactly what an MLBB needs to be. So pretty, so hydrating, so plush. And something about this formula makes your lip lines not look as prominent. It literally just feels like the best lip balm on your lips. I would just say don't push the lipstick too far up because it is so melty. You wanna be able to have control over it. And then I love this so much. I have a second favorite shade. This is shade 13. It's a little bit more of a pinky color. Is that not the prettiest spring summer pink? Just like an everyday wear with anything kind of pink. Oh, and did I forget to mention why some lipsticks have the most amazing melon scent? I have a thing for melon scents, apparently. For perfumes, I wanted to also remind you that perfumes are on sale. They are a pricier item, so I definitely always wait until a good sale to purchase them. This is my current favorite. It is Gucci Flora Gorgeous Gardenia. I'm not a huge, like, super heavy floral person because a lot of scents just turn into baby powder on my skin, but this one doesn't. It is the most beautiful, light, gardenia, jasmine, clean kind of floral but then on the dry down, you just also get this hint of pear. It literally smells better as I wear it throughout the day. I've had friends say that they like associate this scent with me now, which I feel very flattered by because some of my older fragrances that I loved so much just didn't last on my skin, but this one does. If you haven't smelled this, go into your Sephora, take a little whiff, but also when you're trying out fragrances, ask them for a little tester, try it out on your skin and see how it works on your chemistry because that is the real tell, not when you first put it on, not how it smells on a piece of paper, but on your actual skin, that's where the magic happens. For me, this bottle, 
is magic. And would it be a proper Sephora recommendations video if I didn't remind you that these very, very expensive Dyson tools are actually on sale, which they rarely ever, ever are. I'm a little bit, just a little bit low key jealous because uh, my versions are gray and this year they have the cutest pale pink with rose gold crushes me because I want it so bad, but alas, I need to be okay with the ones that I have. As far as the tools go, this is my number one recommendation. I actually prefer this to my air wrap, which I also have, and the brand didn't send these to me. I, I purchased these with my own money. I by far use the blow dryer way more frequently than I use the air wrap. I do like the air wrap, especially when I have curtain bangs because I just kind of like go that way and then it does the perfect like Sabrina Carpenter like swoop, but I honestly do not use it as much as the regular original OG blow dryer. So if you're considering between the two, if you want something that's gonna dry your hair, the dedicated dryer is gonna do a better job than the dryer on the air wrap. And I personally don't really think you save that much time doing the like drying and styling in one for the air wrap. But if you don't want that many hair tools and you just want an all-in-one going from wet to dry kind of product, you can get the air wrap. Also, the curls don't stay quite as long as using a curling iron, which is why I also have a curling iron recommendation. This is my new baby. I'm obsessed with it. This is from T3 and it's their new longer barrel curling wand. My only one regret is I still need the one and a half inch. But honestly, if you have long hair, the longer barrel makes such a huge difference into how quickly and how effectively I can curl my hair. I can literally do all of my hair in less than five minutes with this hair tool and it stays curly all day and then some. It lasts for like a couple days depending on how long I can let myself go between washes. And if you happen to be watching this video and the Sephora sale is not going on or it's over, I actually do have a 20% off coupon code from T3. So you can still get this at a discount. Depending on if you're not a VIB Rouge, if you would like to just buy a T3 hair tool, feel free to use that discount because it's a better discount than what you might get at the Sephora sale. Let me know if you have any other products that you highly, highly, highly recommend that you're for sure buying because I am still putting my own cart together. I'm going to be doing a couple other shorts about like what's in my cart too. So stay tuned to the channel and watch little shorts. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me in the algorithm and feel free to turn on that notification bell so that you know when my future videos come out. I love you guys so, so much. Subscribe to see more and I will see you in the next video. Bye.